Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Layla and we're so happy to have you here with us. But before we get into the Word, we're going to take a moment and pray. Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for the soundness of our minds and our bodies, Lord, the strength and the health that's in them, Lord. We thank you for the endurance to run the race set before us, Lord, and finish in victory. We thank you for everything that you've equipped us with, Lord, the wisdom, the the skill, the ability, the understanding and the knowledge to do all things well as unto you, Lord. We thank you for the spirit of excellence, your excellence that that is in us, Lord, and we thank you for this time in the word together. We ask that you'll minister to us our needs, Lord, show us those areas that need to be strengthened, Lord, and we thank you for the help that you provided in restoring those areas as well, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. Glad to have you with us this morning as we dive into the word, continuing our study in the book of James. And we are in chapter 2, and this morning, we're going to cover verses 10 through 13. So, could I get a volunteer to read that section of scripture, please? I will. All right, honey, honey. For whoever shall keep the whole law, and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So... So speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Amen. So the floor is now open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who would like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. Something that I would ask the Lord uh, concerning verse 10, how is it possible that if you missed one point in the law that you missed all of it? <laughs> I, I just, I, I couldn't imagine. I'm like, well, if you get the sacrifices right, how then can you do the, the murder piece or, you know, you, you keep the, the quote unquote 10 commandments. Okay. You missed the burnt offering on Monday, but how does that make you guilty of the entire thing? The same way that if you love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself, this fulfills all the law and prophets. You stumble in one of those two that makes you guilty of the rest of it. So the Lord is like, did you, did you actually read that to understand this? Today? I sure did, Lord. Sounded like you, 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 how was this possible? Like you were just, you know, picking and choosing. I was like, this isn't, this isn't going to work out, Lord. But he said, you have to, he reminded me of looking at it, how he does. So like I said, if you, if you could get all the law and these two commandments, the love commandment, which is actually just one, um, if you can do that, then if you d- if you transgress that one, then that means you're guilty of the rest because everything is wrapped up in this one. And then um, looking at um, 12 and 13, so speak and so do as those who will be judged by the law of liberty. Remember that the Lord died for you. He redeemed you from the law of sin and death. So your judgment the way you behave and interact with others should be according to that standard that Christ has redeemed you. Not that you are still under this law because back to verse 10, if you're living that way and you fall short in one, you're guilty of all. And and if you go back and read Leviticus, many of the punishments for those types of sin was the person was stoned or burned with fire. So they died, they perished, cut off from the land of the living. But the Lord has redeemed us, so we don't have to face those penalties if we choose to humble ourselves and remain connected to the Lord and and walk with him wholeheartedly, faithfully as we ought to. Then there's a different outcome for us. So as we're operating, don't be so quick to drop that hammer on somebody else because they transgress the natural law. So if you're judging by that, that means you're also living by it. And 
And the Lord was telling me, he said, let me count the ways that you've missed it, Layla. And I was like, oh, okay, Lord. I was like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to get that, 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 that mile long chart is actually past that. We don't, we don't, we don't need to pull that parchment out. Jesus just, that's okay. He said, okay. So then as you mile long chart written in microfiche. <laughs> mm-hmm. Man, I could feel the planet with that par- parchment. And I said, no, 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 Lord, that that's oh, okay. That's okay. We can, we can show mercy, and that's what's at the core of it. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. Mm-hmm. It's everybody else that wants to cry, crucify him, away with her, so on and so forth. The the ones that show no mercy are the exact ones that want to get down on their knees and go, Lord, mercy, have mercy on me, but. Under the law, there was really no mercy. It was eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, animal for animal, life for life. That's what was under the law. You took one, well, you give what you've got. But under the law of liberty, we have mercy. So we're able to fall down on our knees and repent and go, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me, please. And get up out of the dust. Don't just stay there and walk forward with him and continue in righteousness and injustice and then finally to finish up that verse mercy triumphs over judgment so the the condemnation the the mercy of the lord is able to surpass that his goodness his love his grace his his compassion overrules what the the devil try to put and try to trap people in according to natural laws and rules so the lord is all superior he always has been he still is and he forever will be so for us because we are called by his name we should also be demonstrating the same standard metric and measurements that the lord does because we are ambassadors on his behalf we're walking in his name and as such just like in a national or a country that has ambassadors they represent the land they come from and they only operate according to the rules of the land where they come from they don't get to decide what they want to do they have to follow the rules of the governing authorities, and so do we. Amen. And you know, what the Lord was actually saying to you was, are you going to choose to stay under what you think you should stay under? Are you going to come up to something higher? The um, When you look at what he showed us, uh, what the, the Holy Spirit was showing us in the earlier parts of chapter two, he's really stop. He's really saying, stop acting like a natural man, feigning religion. Because if you look back at the gospels, the religious people are the ones who wanted to stone, right? The, the ones who were feigning righteousness, who wanted to stone the woman that was caught in adultery. And the Lord through the, uh, the, the Lord through James is saying, Hey, there are, there are laws that there are spiritual laws that are in action here. The, the law of Moses shows and highlights the law of sin and death. That's what it brings to our awareness. But he's also saying, choose not to remain under the law of sin and death and come up and live under the law of liberty and the law of love, right? Because he, he told us that in verse eight of chapter two, love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. Um, When it comes to this, we feel empowered in our flesh to live under the law of Moses, the law of sin and death. That means because if I can stack up 10, 10 things that I'm doing right, I can walk around with my hat on and my little bells jingling off my clothes and I can stand and go, Lord, I'm thankful that I'm not like that sinner, the tax collector. I I'm thankful that I'm not like that prostitute on the corner. I'm thankful. Right. And we can praise ourselves and put down others because we choose to live under that law of sin and death that gratifies our flesh. But then when you get down to the nitty gritty of it and it's like, well, okay, you like to live that way. Well then let's, let's talk about what that actually means for you. That means there's no mercy for you because sin and death is hard and fast. Just like what you talked about. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You do one thing wrong. You step out of line. Sin, the penalty of sin is death, which is what we covered in chapter one. Right? Yes, mommy. When it brings forth its fullness, it's going to bring forth death. When when sin reaches its fullness. So he's saying to us, there's something higher. There's a superseding spiritual law that the father has called us unto. That's grace and mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. So 
stop being prideful in your mindset and your attitude and consider what this truly means for you. Right. And he doesn't want us to be selfish in nature. He always, he already called us to have the same heart that was in our Lord and savior to That's love our it. neighbor as ourselves because love does no harm to a neighbor. Right. I'm bridging a, another scripture to bring those together. But the concept is still the same. Have the same heart that your, your heavenly father has. This is how he thinks of things and move out of that vain piety and move into the God kind of love, the God kind of life. So here in um, verse 12, the law of liberty, that's a supernatural law. And it supersedes the law of sin and death. But the law of liberty does not say, well, if it feels good, do it. God's going to forgive me anyway. That's not the law of liberty. That is a, you've missed it. But the liberty that we have in Christ Jesus is that love covers a multitude of sin not animal sacrifice. The love of God covers a multitude of sins and it draws us to repentance and reconciliation with Christ Jesus. And it allows us to allow others to be drawn to repentance and reconciliation in Christ Jesus. For judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. That's a direct link back to the law of sin and death, which is what the law of Moses highlights. You do wrong, we're going to get you because that's what you deserve. But Christ said, I know that you did wrong. I came that you could come under my blood, have all of your sins blotted out and remembered no more. And then you can be received and accepted in the beloved and you can go on into the kingdom of glory. And those sins will never be remembered again. And you will have access to this law of liberty and you will receive the fullness of the law of love applied to your life. Because now you've agreed to it, you've accepted that. And then you likewise are accepted by him and you're able to move on in. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Mm -hmm. So that means that's another spiritual law that we need to pay attention to. We want God's mercy, right? Because the mercy of God through the blood of Jesus Christ, which it's shown triumphs over the judgment that and the penalty being rightfully served on those whom it's due, right? When sin reaches its fullness, it brings forth death. But if you bring that sin under the blood of Jesus Christ, it does not have an opportunity to reach its fullness. As long as you cease from that sin, right? And you leave it under the blood. It does not have the opportunity to bring forth death or reach its fullness to hit that, that trigger. Here comes death marching down the, coming down the plains, right? Because you brought it under the blood, but that was mercy triumphing over judgment and mercy is not receiving the exact thing reward consequence whichever way you want to phrase it that mm-hmm. you do actually deserve not receiving that negative consequence that's, that's, that, that's the connotation yes. it's, it's not receiving that judgment that death for your actions attitudes mm-hmm. and behaviors so he's saying come that the law of love for god so loved the world that he sent right Yes, and Jesus loved us so much that he laid down his life so that we could have that application of this law of mercy over triumph over the law of judgment, which is the law of sin and death. That's another way that you could call that in our particular lives. Mm-hmm. So the way that we receive that, we should also generously supply that to anyone, our neighbor, right? Because... Judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. So you trying to keep everybody else out of the kingdom and you trying to keep them from getting mercy, then that means you can't go into the kingdom, right? Because that's, yes, that's right. a spiritual law that can be put into place. If you don't want mercy to be shown, then you don't get any mercy. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Whatever you do unto others, that's what you can expect to be done unto you. Mm-hmm. Whatever you sow, you shall reap, right? So then for us, we should be generously sowing mercy mercy because i want it to be slathered onto my life i want it to be lavished (laughs) generously onto my life and i don't take that mercy lightly i don't crucify again for myself the lord of glory by continuing in sin and look him in his face like you won't forgive me anyway i don't treat my god like that Mm -hmm. but i appreciate it and if there's wide entrance given for me to come into the kingdom i should make that for others because that's how i want my lord to treat me and that's how he has treated me 
and I love him as I love myself and I love others. Go ahead, Annie. Well, I was going to say at the, the core of that, what's it called? That's, bec- that's called becoming like Christ, Amen. being conformed to his image, right? We're talking yeah. about love and the love component. Well, how did the Lord fulfill all that? You can look at Matthew 5, uh, I'll read 43 through 48. It says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the first or on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you, do you have? Not even the tax collectors or do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brethren only, what do you Oh, sorry. Yes. What do you do more than others? Mm -hmm. Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. But then let's also look at Romans 8. uh, And I'll read verses 26 through 29. Likewise, the Spirit, because we're talking about the law of liberty here, right? And that comes from the Lord. And we're, being, we're to be led by his spirit. It says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know how we should pray as we ought. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren. So we understand all that at this at this point. Jesus said, I didn't come to judge, but if I do, right, my judgment is pure. But he demonstrated love. He demonstrated grace and mercy towards all of those. And there's scripture that even says that even now he is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for the saints. So the Lord is still interceding on our behalf. Still, even when, even when and for those that are in opposition. And I say when and for, just because someone gave their life to Christ, prayed a prayer, doesn't mean that there, and that's what we're talking about here now, right? There are things in their life that need to be brought under the blood, that need to be uprooted from their life because it does not reflect them being conformed to the image of Jesus the Christ, his nature, his character, his attributes, his heart towards the Father and towards his neighbor as himself, right? And we mentioned this in a previous episode that those things need to be uprooted. We need to examine ourselves before the Lord to find out what is in our life that is limiting our love, and I mean in totality, heart, soul, mind, and strength towards our Heavenly Father and our neighbor as ourself. So in this section of Scripture, the Lord, through James, is saying address those things. But wait, we also read it right from Jesus' own words, this is what it looks like, right? We, we talked about uh, the Lord leading us to do this study because there is much practical application and wisdom and how to walk and live out our walk of faith with the Lord. Well, this is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Are you demonstrating? Are you giving grace and or mercy even when people absolutely deserve judgment? And but you're not the one who can call. Amen. And say that's, they deserve judgment. Well, thank you. That's where I was going next. Part your lips to say that, then that means everything that you've done now, the the click has to be the switch has to be hit for you to return mm-hmm. to receive 
that harsh judgment that you want someone else to bear, it's now your time to get your comeuppance. Absolutely. Which is why I was going to reference that. But also let's go back to <laughs> what he says. He makes intercession according to the will of God. Amen. Which so is what's what, the Lord's will in this? And what that's what we should be doing, Amen. interceding. Because when Jesus was being murdered on the cross and there was no one more righteous and holy than he, nobody even compares, he still said, forgive them, Lord. Exactly. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He offered mercy to those who he could have rightly called and said, it's time for their judgment. We have no such ability because if you have sin on the books, you've ever sinned in your life, cast the first stone. Oh, Absolutely. you've never done any sin, cast the first stone. Okay. And, and that doesn't count for us. I'll give you an, a, another example. Mm-hmm. Sorry, that made me a little bit spicy. Little, yeah, wait a no. <laughs> it, it's, it's necessary <laughs> for us to rightly saying, examine the word, right? Let's look at Moses in the book of Numbers. And it starts in like Numbers chapter 10. And, and I'll say it continues through through chapter 18, right? But if you look at, if you study that out, yes, people brought judgment upon themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but what did Moses do? Yeah, Lord, strike them down. Do, no, no. Every time Moses was there interceding to the Lord on their behalf. Don't destroy them. Don't wipe them out. Mm-hmm. Even Even then getting at Aaron and directing him and saying, go dip your censer and stand in the gap, if you will, before between the plague and the people to check it, right? <laughs> so there's there's another example, and, and I, I'll bring up Moses, because what, what was said about Jesus, that the Lord was going to raise up another prophet like him from amongst the people. Mm-hmm. So you see, it's not just for the Lord to function in this way. Moses was a, was a man with a nature like ours. And I know that's said about Elijah. But let's understand this in full. If, if Moses was used as an example for us to understand how the Lord was going to come, then shouldn't we also receive the full example and say, oh, wait, this is how we should be carrying and conducting ourselves. This should be our heart towards the Lord and his people. And Moses faced much opposition from his own. Mm-hmm. Mercy. And he, he still gave mercy and interceded on their behalf. If and you're he not, said, I mean, we just read it. If you're not willing to show mercy, you're not going to get any mercy. Exactly. So. So for each of us, let's examine ourselves before the Lord. Find out what I'll say the, the stumbling blocks are, the things that are hindering us from moving forward mm-hmm. in love and, and I mean, the totality of love with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength towards the Lord and our neighbor. Love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Amen. Well, there's a lot in there. So let's pause for, there for today. And with that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, Lord, and not the judgment and that we deserve, Lord. We thank you for the faithfulness that you've displayed towards us, Lord, the love and giving us the opportunity to repent and come before you, Lord, to humble ourselves and continue on in righteousness with you, Lord. We thank you for our partners and listeners, Lord, that they are dispersing that forgiveness and that mercy to others and that love as they go to work and as they go to school or do whatever it is that you call them to do lord and we thank you for blessing them for protecting them and providing for them in jesus name amen in jesus almighty name amen and amen well we love you god bless you have a wonderful day want to know more about a day of prayer sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.